workshop today. Uh, are you all able to hear me? If you all can hear me, someone can just uh, send a message in the chat box so that we can start our today's session. Are you all able to hear me? If anyone can just reply. Is everyone able to hear me? Can you all hear me? If you all can hear me, please reply so we can start the session. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, first of all, welcome everyone uh, for our today's bath bomb session. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, before we start, uh, there are a lot of people who have already joined a lot of my workshops. But for those who are new and who have never joined my workshops before, uh, Organic Creation Soap is my, uh, is my YouTube channel. And I'm Nisha, my name is Nisha and I take a lot of workshops on skincare products. Uh, I also give uh, a couple of free workshops, uh, you know, every month or once in two months as and when I get the time. Uh, so this is how we work and today I have scheduled a free bath bomb session. Uh, before I start the session, I just want to know, I'll be continuing the session in English. Uh, is it okay with all? Or do you all want me to do the session in Hindi because I'm okay with either English or Hindi. If English is okay, then please let me know. I'll go ahead and we will start. Alright. Okay, so first of all, uh, we are going, as I said, we are going to be making bath bombs today. Uh, I have had a lot of questions, a lot of people. Uh, hi everyone, everyone who has sent me hi messages, hi to all and welcome uh, to the workshop. So uh, many of y'all have been asking me questions about uh, what are bath bombs. Uh, I couldn't reply to everyone because I thought I will uh, explain to y'all, I will be explaining to y'all what are bath bombs exactly for those who don't know and who are, you know, going to learn it for the first time. So first of all, I have a bath bomb here which I would like to show y'all. This is how a bath bomb looks like. So basically, what is a bath bomb? Okay, a bath bomb uh, is something that uh, you know you can also use it like a bath soap. Uh, something which you can just put it in your tub. And if you have certain ingredients, I will be going through the list of all the ingredients that we are going to be using. I'm going to give you all the recipe as well. The recipe is going to be shared. But you all need to write down the recipes. So please take a pen and a paper so that you can write down all the measurements what I'm going to be telling you all for this, uh, uh, for how to make a bath bomb. Uh, so basically if you add certain ingredients uh, which I will talk about, um, you can also use this bath bomb as a bath soak, as a relaxant. Uh, you know, which will relax all your uh, body muscles, which will make you feel, um, uh, you know, very, uh, uh, as you say, very relaxed. If you have any body pain, if you have any uh, pains in your uh, hands, legs, uh, this is something that can help you relieve that pain, like a relaxant. You can also use it in that way. If at all you want to use, you can also use it as a, uh, you know, just to take a bath. Because we also make uh, bath bombs with uh, uh, foaming agents. Generally, foaming agent is something which you use to give you lather, which is used to give lather to your soap. So we also add, a, if we add a little bit of foaming agent to our bath bomb, we can also use it to have a bath. We can use the bath bomb in our tub. Uh, you'll get a lot of lather. You can have a bath with it. The other way in which you can use a bath bomb, which generally children love. Children love the 
fizzy effect of the bath form. How the fizzy effect comes, with what ingredient you get that fizz, I will explain to you all when I am telling you all what ingredients we are going to be using. So basically in these three different ways, you can use your bath bombs depending on what ingredient you are adding. Like if you want to use it as a relaxant, if you want to use it you know, just to have a bath with a foaming agent or if you want to use it just for the fizz, just to enjoy the fizz in your tub. Uh, which generally kids love to do. So th these are the different ways in which you can uh, use your bath bombs. You can make it and use it and it is very easy to make. You just need to understand what ingredients in what ratio you need to add and it is very simple to make them. Um, those who don't have bath tub. Okay, if you do not have a bath tub, you can also use your bath bomb in your normal bucket. There is no need, you don't need to just have a bath tub. You can uh, soak, you can use it as a uh, bath soak. Okay, because all the ingredients are more or less the same what falls in bath soaks. So you just need to put your bath bomb in your tub, in your normal bucket. Uh, let it all fizz out, let it all, uh, uh, you know, uh, dissolve into the water and then you can take a shower with that water. You will get equally good results when all those ingredients uh, comes in contact with your body. Okay, what are those ingredients? How are they going to help? I will just go ahead and tell you all that now. Uh, shelf life of the bath bomb, you can use it uh, six, up to 6 to 8 months. If you preserve it well, uh, if you package it well, uh, nothing is going to happen to your bath bombs for next 6 to 8 months because it already has certain natural preservatives uh, which don't allow it to get spoiled very fast. Uh, bath salts. Yeah, bath salts are completely different. Uh, someone has asked me a question, difference between bath form and bath salt. Bath salt is completely different. It's nowhere uh, the same as a bath bomb. So we won't talk about that because they are both different products altogether. Uh, now, for bath bombs, we are going to be making a little advanced bath bombs. Uh, so, the recipe, I'm going to be sharing the recipe with you all right now. After sharing the recipe, we will start the making of these bath bombs. Uh, so, for that, our first main ingredient, please write it down. If you all have a pen and a paper handy, please write it down. For those uh, who uh, you know cannot write it down, I'm sure someone or the other will post it in the group once uh, they take down the uh, recipe. So our first main ingredient when we are making a bath bomb is baking soda. That is a very very important ingredient to make a bath bomb which is baking soda and which is citric acid. So these two when they combine together, when baking soda and citric acid combine together, that is when they form that fizzing effect in your bath bomb. That is what gives you that fizzy effect in your bath bomb. When they react with each other, baking soda and citric acid. So these are the two main important ingredients. Without this, you cannot make a bath bomb. Without the baking soda and the citric acid. Now I am going to be sharing a 200 gram recipe of your uh, bath bombs. If anyone doesn't want to make 200 gram recipe, just cut it to half and make a 100 gram batch. So for a 200 gram batch recipe, baking soda will be 110 grams. You will be using 110 grams of baking soda. You will just use half of that amount. Whatever baking so amount of baking soda you have used, half of that amount will be citric acid. So your citric acid will be 55 grams. For those who have just joined, I am just sharing the recipe of the uh, bath bombs that we will be making today. Before I start making it, actually I am just sharing the recipe and then we will start the making. Uh, so for this bath bomb, baking soda is 110 grams. And citric acid is just half of it, which is 55 grams. Now the next very important ingredient, the reason why we are adding this ingredient, I'm going to tell you that as well. Our next very important ingredient is cornstarch. 
Now, in place of cornstarch, if at all you do not have cornstarch, you can use arrowroot powder, you can use tapioca powder. Tapioca powder is a little more expensive. Uh, arrowroot or cornstarch is uh, a little more uh, cheaper version, cheaper alternative, and it gives you an amazing uh, effect for your bath bombs. So, cornstarch is 20 grams, what we will be using for our 200 gram batch. The reason why we are using cornstarch is to give a good hold to our bath bomb. Now we need to add certain ingredients to our bath bomb which will hold it together so that it doesn't break easily, so that it hardens well. So tapioca powder, cornstarch, arrowroot, these are the ingredients which helps to tighten, keep your bath bomb intact and hold it together. So this is an ingredient which I do not recommend to skip or not use because then uh, you might end up making a bath bomb which is not hard enough so even if you want to sell it even if you want to ship it somewhere there are chances that your bath bomb just breaks before it even reaches you know wherever you it has to be shipped so this is an ingredient which will help to keep your bath bomb nice and hard and intact after that, we have our next ingredient, which is Epsom salt. Epsom salt is our next ingredient, which is 7 grams. Now, the bath bomb that we are going to be making here is more of a relaxant and a, uh, uh, you know, fizzy bath bomb. Uh, Epsom salt is the main ingredient which will give you that relaxant feeling. As you know, even when you have general aches and pains, we use Epsom salt you know, as a soak, just to soak our feet, soak our hands, legs. Uh, and what happens is, what's the benefit of Epsom salt is, uh, it, it's a very natural ingredient which helps to relieve pain. Any type of pain, body pain, even if you have a backache, and if you have a bath with Epsom salt, you see, uh, after a while, you start feeling, you know, the pain just goes away, you feel more relaxed. So that is because of the Epsom salt. Epsom salt has that property to relax your body muscles. So that is something which we are going to be adding for our bath bomb today. And we are going to be adding it at 7 grams. You do not have to add too much of this Epsom salt. 7 grams is more than enough to give you that good relaxed feeling in the tub. Or even if you do not have a tub as I said, just soak it, just put it in your bucket let everything get dissolved and then you have your bath you will still get the same benefit uh, in the tub it is just for that added advantage that extra added advantage where you can just sit in the tub relax yourself spend some more time let the, uh, uh, you know all the ingredients that we have added in it get absorbed uh, well uh, in your skin that is the reason why uh, using it in the tub gives you that little extra benefit but it's not, it's not like if you do not have a tub, you cannot make this. You can still make it, use it and still get the benefit out of it. Okay, so, uh, so far I'll just run you on through the recipe once again. Uh, baking soda, I have taken, baking soda, I have taken 110 grams. Uh, uh, citric acid is 55 grams. Cornstarch is 20 grams. Epsom salt is 7 grams. So far, I have just given you all this much of the recipe. Now, another very, very important ingredient which we cannot miss in making a bath bomb is the type of a clay. Uh, again, I said it is very important for us to make a bath bomb which holds on well. You know, there are a lot of bath bombs you make them. You keep them to dry even for 24 hours after making them, but they are not hard enough. A bath bomb has to be, you know, of such a, a, a consistency that after it is dried about six to seven hours, and if you just tap it on, uh, you know, uh, any surface, uh, you should get that noise, that noise when something is hard. I'm not saying you have to just bang it very badly, but even if you tap it on any surface, it should give you that noise, that it is firm enough. So for that firmness, you need to add some type of clay so that you get that good effect hold on your uh, bath bomb. So we have already taken a little bit of cornstarch which is going to help with that. 
but furthermore what is going to help to harden okay the cornstarch is going to give it a good hold on the bath bomb but further to harden your bath bomb we are going to be using kaolin clay kaolin clay is one of the best clays to keep your bath bombs good hard and intact it's not going to be excessively hard but it is going to remain enough hard that you know what is needed so kaolin clay if at all you are making about 200 grams batch the recipe that i have shared you just need to add 1 teaspoon of kaolin clay that's all that you need to add 1 teaspoon of kaolin clay a big teaspoon not a small teaspoon a full big teaspoon of kaolin clay okay please don't miss out on this again if you do not have kaolin clay you can go for rose clay you can go for french pink clay you can go for french green clay all these clays again will be one big teaspoon for every 200 grams batch that we are making if you want to make a double the size like uh, instead of 200 you want to make 400 then put two big teaspoons of kaolin clay or any other clay that is available but it is necessary to add any type of clay to your bath bomb this is going to help you get a good form bath bomb now after adding all these ingredients we need something these are all our powdered ingredients if you must have for those who have written down the ingredients you all can just have a look at it all these are powdered ingredients but if i want to make a bath bomb i want to add certain ingredients which will hold my bath bomb together so for that if i just have all powdered ingredients i'm not going to be able to bind my bath bomb together so to bind my bath bomb together and to make it a good consistency that it can stay and hold together i need to add any carrier oil it is very important this is again a very important uh, uh, ingredient that needs to go in your bath bomb again to give you more conditioning and nourishing effect for your skin if you are just going to add citric acid baking soda uh, corn starch these are all very dry ingredients to your skin they are all dry okay if you just add these ingredients by itself you will feel your body is very dry after you come out from your shower so to keep your skin more moisturized more hydrated you know you sh you should still get that softness on your skin even after using the bath bomb and after coming out from your shower because after the bath bomb you don't need to apply soap on your skin when you are having a bath with a bath bomb that... okay uh, i'm so sorry there might be a little bit of reception problems um uh, okay there might be a little bit of reception issues because of the heavy rain today um uh, yeah there is a network problem are you able to hear me now it's got connected again if anyone can just reply if you can hear me okay um uh, is anyone uh, are, is everyone able to hear me if anyone can just reply back okay great Uh, so you all can hear me. Okay, someone asked me a question. Uh, can we use a fuller's earth? That is multani mitti. Uh, I do not suggest using fuller's earth clay, which is multani mitti, for this particular bath bomb, because clays like multani mitti generally are very sticky on the skin. Uh, so I would not recommend using multani mitti for this particular bath bomb recipe that we are making. Uh, the other alternatives to kaolin clay is french pink clay green clay uh, any these types of clays brazilian uh, blue clay uh, cambrian blue clay these are all the different clays of kaolin clay which is one of the cheapest alternative these are the clays that you can use uh, if not kaolin clay then any of these other french pink green yellow these clays you can uh, replace with the kaolin clay uh so now uh, coming to the nourishing part as i said all the ingredients like baking soda citric acid corn starch these are all very drying to the skin so we need something more moisturizing more nourishing to your skin where uh, which is why we need to add some type of oil 
to even hold and bind your bath bomb together and even to give you a nourishing effect on your skin. So you can take whatever oil you want. The oil, the proportion, the quantity of oil that you will use is 5 grams. So for every 200 gram batch that you are making, 5 grams of uh, any carrier oil is what you will use for your bath bomb. Now, uh, when I say a carrier oil, I would always recommend try to go for a very nourishing oil. Like you can go for almond oil which is very nourishing for your skin. Uh, if not almond oil, if you want a cheaper version, you can go for sunflower oil or rice bran oil. Again, these oils are also very nourishing, very conditioning for your skin. <coughs> so, these are the options that you have where oils are concerned. If you want to go ahead and uh, or, you know if you're making it for personal use if you want it more nourishing you can go ahead and use more expensive oils like you can use oils like uh, uh, avocado oil or uh, hemp seed oil uh, ovova oil these are more nourishing more conditioning oils they are a little more expensive but you can go ahead and use it for a better effect so you have the option whatever oils carrier oils you want to use you have to use it at five grams now the last and the main ingredient for our recipe, uh, as I said, this is a little advanced bath bomb. So generally, if any one of y'all must have made bath bombs, uh, I've got a lot of people telling me that they make bath bombs, they use oil in their bath bombs, but then when they use it in the tub, there is oil and if they use any mica color, there is color and oil all at the side of the tub. Now that is the reason it happens because you have oil in your bath bomb. So the moment you put your bath bomb in the water, all the other ingredients is going to dissolve in the water. Your baking soda, citric acid, cornstarch, everything dissolves in the water. But your, uh, your Epsom salt dissolves in the water. But your oil cannot dissolve in the water. So what happens is the oil remains and starts floating on top. It makes your entire tub or your bucket oil. So to avoid that, we need an emulsifier. And what is an emulsifier for people who are, you know, who have never joined any skincare classes? An emulsifier is something which combines the oil and the water, and it emulsifies it. That is, it makes it one homogeneous mixture. So what will happen is when you add an emulsifier in your product, the moment you put your bath bomb in the water and the moment the oil comes in contact with your emulsifier and the water, so the water, the oil and the emulsifier, when they come in contact with each other, it emulsifies, it becomes one homogeneous mixture and the oil does not float on top of your tub or at the sides of your tub. So what will happen is it will leave a good and a clean after effect because everything has homogenized and become one solution and you get a very nice creamy effect on your skin. Because when you combine oil water with the emulsifier, you get a good creamy texture, a good creamy consistency. So when that everything combines together, when you drop it in the water, you will see automatically everything emulsifies and you feel a soft and a smooth effect on your body, even once you have finished your shower. So this is the work of an emulsifier. And for this particular uh, bath bomb, the emulsifier that we will be using is polysorbate 80. That is the emulsifier. There are a lot of other emulsifiers which you can use. But this is one of the most commonly used emulsifier for uh, making a bath bomb because it's in a liquid form. We need an emulsifier which is in a liquid form, not in a solid form. Alright. So the emulsifier that we are using here is polysorbate 80 and the quantity is 3 grams. I will again run you through the entire recipe, what we are going to make right now. After we have made this recipe, I will also give you all a little bit of tips uh, at the end of how you can make your foaming bath bomb, how you can foam it, what you need to add. Uh, uh, that I will tell you all at the end. First, we will actually start our making. Before we start the making, I will again repeat the entire recipe 
for those who have missed out who have joined late please write down the recipe because no pdf is going to be shared on this so uh, we are going to be using 110 grams of baking soda it's a normal baking soda that you get at any local uh, grocery store it's nothing different it's just the normal baking soda 110 grams 55 grams of citric acid again normal citric acid what you get at the local grocery store 55 grams of citric acid 20 grams of corn starch corn starch can be compensated with tapioca powder or arrowroot powder whatever you have available you can use if you do not have corn starch corn starch is 20 grams epsom salt is 7 grams epsom salt is going to help you with relaxing your body if you have any aches pains in your body legs back anywhere if you just soak yourself in it you will see the relief kaolin clay 1 teaspoon one whole teaspoon of kaolin clay please don't put half a teaspoon or whatever one whole teaspoon of kaolin clay uh, oil any carrier oil of your choice it will be 5 grams and polysorbate 80 will be 3 grams okay this is the overall recipe for those who wish to add any type of essential oils to give a more calming effect like if you if you are making a bath bomb you know for relaxing purpose as a relaxant if you are making a lavender bath bomb you can go ahead and you can add about 3 to 4 drops of lavender essential oil in this recipe there is no problem you can go ahead and do that don't over uh, you know don't go overboard with your liquid ingredients too much of liquid ingredients will make uh, will create other complications with your bath bomb everything will expand when you are making the bath bomb because there's a chemical reaction that happens when you combine all the baking soda the citric acid when you combine it together there's a chemical reaction that happens the moment you add any liquid to it so don't go overboard with the liquid just keep it to the uh, exact proportions that i have shared with you all right otherwise then your bath bombs will not stay sturdy for a longer time so now i have shared the recipe with you now quickly we will start the making of this and i will show you how we are going to make the bath bombs after which i will take a few questions if you all have any questions please write it down once we are doing the making of this as and when i get free i will take your questions okay so i already have my ingredients weighed out here uh just a minute before i start mixing the ingredients let me check uh if anyone has any uh both oil starts smelling bad after a few months no oil will not start smelling bad after a few months if you have an emulsifier if you do not have an emulsifier you will start getting a peculiar smell with the oil but if you have an emulsifier then you will not have that problem olive oil bhi aap use kar sakte hain you can add any oil of your choice i would suggest go for light carrier oils olive oil is a heavy oil so try to uh, avoid any heavy oils go for light carrier oils uh because this is not something uh you know which has a lot of emulsifier or lot of other products to remove off all the oil so go for lightweight oils nourishing lightweight oils emulsifier is polysorbate 80 poly p o l y sorbate s o r b a t e polysorbate 80 80 uh any other emulsifier there are lot other emulsifiers but for this particular recipe i am going to be sharing poly polysorbate a corn starch corn flour yes they are the same remains will be left in the bath tub yes it remains means only the frothy remains no oil nothing else even the color even the mica will all get emulsified together all that will be left Uh, if you are adding remains also means what if supposing you are adding some toppings like if supposing you want to add some dried buds on top and make your bath bomb that is the remains that will be left at the end apart from that nothing is going to be left because the oil is going to get emulsified there is going to be froth 
the fizzy froth which is all going to uh, turn back it's all going to go away when it comes in contact with air everything is going to fizz out and only the water is going to remain in your tub unless if you are adding some dried herbs those remains will remain in the tub bath bomb how to use just put the bath bomb in the water in your tub or in your bucket and it will automatically start fizzing it will fizz i will show you i'll give you a demo with the bath bomb that i have right now which is ready i'll show you all at the end how it looks how it fizzes it just fizzes fizzes and it just becomes very frothy and you have to just soak yourself if you have a tub and enjoy the relaxing effect okay so now i'll take more questions later now we'll start with the making of the spa bomb so here i have my big container if you're making for selling please wear gloves because there's a lot of mixing that that happens when you're making a bath bomb i am not going to sell the product this is all for personal use so i am not using gloves but please if you all are selling very important sanitize everything before you all start uh, spray everything with 99% rubbing alcohol the entire place where you're making your product spray it with 99% rubbing alcohol wipe everything well sanitize well and then start making your product use of gloves if you're selling is very important please do not uh, avoid following these steps these steps help in preserving your product for a longer time okay so here i have my empty bowl and the first thing what i am going to be adding i am using my hands here because it's for personal use as i said if you're not selling it please don't just use your hands or uh, use gloves now this is my baking soda okay baking soda will have a lot of lumps make sure that you don't have any lumps in your when you're making your bath bomb that is the first step uh, if you have a sieve just uh, strain it in the sieve so that all the lumps settle on the sieve uh, if you do not have a sieve just break all the lumps nicely with your hand and you can use it there is no problem here i have already weighed out my uh, uh, you know my baking soda and i am going to be making a 400 gram batch double the quantity of the recipe that i shared with all uh, this is a 400 gram batch what i am making so the quantity of baking soda is double than what is shared so i am the first ingredient that that's going in my container is my baking soda and everything is all um mixed well and uh, there are also one more thing uh, there is a difference between baking soda and baking powder please go ahead and buy baking soda and not baking powder okay please don't buy baking powder you need baking soda now after that i do not have any left lumps in this baking soda that i have here the next ingredient that's going in my container is my citric acid all right this is my citric acid powder that i have here these are small the same citric acid pow uh, powder which you use to lower the ph of your skin care products uh, it's just the same which you will get anywhere in any store uh, citric acid uh, uh, please don't keep it open even if you uh, going to take some time to make your product please cover it with something don't keep it just open because generally when it comes in contact with uh, uh, you know the moisture in the air uh, it starts becoming very hard okay it starts becoming very lumpy and it becomes very hard because there's a little bit of uh, a dissolving process that starts happening when it comes in contact with uh, the moisture in the air so please make sure even if it's out you're covering it with a lid Uh, if you are going to take time to start making the product otherwise keep it in the packet till the time you are not making your product so now i have gone ahead and mixed these dry ingredients well mixing is the key when you are making your bath bombs mixing is the key you have to mix all your ingredients well so that uh, you know everything is combined well together so now i have mixed both these ingredients well and in this container i have my already weighed epsom salt my uh, kaolin clay and my cornstarch 
all the three ingredients are already weighed out in this and I have kept it ready. So I am going to go ahead and add this powdered ingredient. So basically these are all the powdered ingredients that are going into this. We have not added any liquid ingredients at all. So these are all my powdered ingredients which I have to combine very well. Combining them together is very very important. Okay, so I have combined all the ingredients. If you need a spoon, if you need a spatula uh, to combine, go ahead and use that, no problem. Okay, so now once we are done with this, this is all our dry ingredients that we have here. Now once we are done with this, before we go ahead and we add our uh, polysorbate, here I have my combination of polysorbate 80 and my oil. I have mixed both together. Okay, the emulsifier and the oil, I have mixed both together, measured both to, uh, together. And now what I am going to go ahead and do is, I am going to go ahead and add uh, this wet ingredients into the mixture. Now what we can do, even if we want, like you have a choice. If supposing you want two different colors, what you can do is, you can at this point in time itself, you can separate it. You can add your mica color in it and then you can add your... Uh, uh, you know, you can add this mixture with, uh, of your oil and your polysorbate in. So, I am going ahead and because I don't have separate of each, so I am going ahead and I am adding this uh, uh, entire mixture into this and I will go ahead and combine it. Later on, if I want to add a little mica, I will go ahead and add it on the top. Okay, so this is the solution which I am adding in my mixture. And we give it a mix. Now you have to make sure that what should be the consistency of your bath bomb. The consistency of your bath bomb should be like a, uh, you know, like wet sand. Uh, how you have the damp sand uh, which when you just, you know, hold it on your... Uh, uh, hold it in your hand and leave it it doesn't break you know it stays as it is that should be of damp sand your consistency of your bath bomb has to be the same like damp sand i won't say wet sand i will say damp sand because wet sand we don't want it that uh, you know that much wet and i'll show you all the consistency once we are done mixing. This is something, this is a part that uh, you need to do very well so that all your wet ingredients is completely combined with all the dry ingredients. going to go ahead and mix this well and now this looks well combined so now what I'm going to do okay this is what I wanted to show you now if I'm holding this in my hand like this and if I throw it down you see the lump is still here it's not broken so this is the consistency what we want this is the consistency what we need when we are making a bath ball the other thing is there are a lot of people who make bath bombs but they say it keeps breaking. Okay, It's not uh, something which is not normal. Bath bombs do break many a times. Okay, Even I have been making for years now but there are so many times where bath bombs just don't set. They just break. Okay, Even if there are a lot of reasons again the setting, the climate, everything. Uh, so in that case, what you have to do is you can always, uh, if you feel it's not setting, you can just spray, just to moisten your, uh, you know, this powder, you can just spray uh, either 99% rubbing alcohol uh, in a container. You can take it like how I have it in this uh, uh, spray bottle. 
either you take witch hazel extract and spray it just to moisten not a lot just on top to moisten it so that it sets well either you use a uh, um, witch hazel extract or you use 99% rubbing alcohol and just spray it give it two three sprays that's it and then try to set it so uh, that will solve the problem of breaking of your bath bomb now here these are the bath bomb containers that i have which i will be setting my bath bombs in the first one since it's a white color i have little bit of chamomile uh, herbs here dried herbs so i'm just placing them in one of the tin and now how you need to fill this you need to check you need to see that you need to fill just give it a little tap in between and then fill it till the top you have to fill it till the top that is a very important thing because so that there should be no gap no air at all uh, you know and it should be they should be able to hold each other both the sides have to be full like this and then you have to go ahead and press them together right now i have not even sprayed it with my 99% rubbing alcohol uh, if i feel this is complete because i found it completely set if i feel this is completely set my bath bombs are coming out beautifully i will not even need to use it okay if i feel the need i will use it now after pressing this you just need to take your uh, spoon or whatever just give it a tap go on the other side if it's not coming out immediately don't uh, press it forcefully to come out okay so see this side is come out easily side is not come, not set still if it is not set just leave it wait for another 2 3 minutes but do not try to just pull it out because it will completely break if you feel it's not set just go to the next one just make another one and try opening that no this is not yet set and i do not want to risk it how easily this top portion came out that is taking some time so what we'll do is we'll just keep it here and we'll go for the next one maybe in a while i'm closing this maybe in another 2 3 minutes that side will also open same way now i'm doing it without the chamomile i'm just filling both the sides and then i am covering it okay so now this is open if it is opening up comfortably please open it otherwise please wait so this side has also opened comfortably so this is how the bath bomb will look once it's open now i will try even the chamomile one i will just place this on a plate and i will try the chamomile one also i think by now that should also open I will show you later all the bath bombs. I have just placed them to dry there. Please don't pull, as I said. Just be a little comfortable. Okay. So this is now open. 
This side has also opened. Okay. This side is also. So this is the chamomile one part. All beautifully set. And I will just keep it in the plate now, and then later, last, I will show you all all the parts. You have to keep it in the on the plate just to dry out because what happens is sometimes immediately as you remove it, it can be a little loose. So you have to just keep it for at least ten minutes. Let it come in contact with the air. Let it dry out well, and then you can go ahead and touch it or shake it or do whatever you want. Okay. So now the next what we do is two. We have already made white. Now we'll just make some different color. I'll just show you two color types how you can make it. So now, if someone wanted to make with some herbs on top, you'll know how to do it. I just showed you one part of it. Now, supposing if you want two colors, okay? I have just taken two halves. I have just taken my white base in two halves. and if you have seen the thing here i did not even need to spray anything it has just come out with the right proportion of uh, my uh, polysorbate and my oil it has come out beautifully just with that it's enough damp and moist okay so in one i'm putting a little bit of orange and in the other one i'm putting a little bit of yellow for a long time and uh, you know it is uh, uh, it is getting dry because it's open for a long time go ahead and spray your 99% rubbing alcohol two or three sprays again it will become nice and moist okay so this is one we've got a light yellow a very light yellow if anyone doesn't want to add mica colors you can add natural clays to give it color okay you don't need to add only mica colors you can give it natural clays to make your color so now i'm going to go ahead and make this colorful one one side i have put orange if you all just had a look one side i have put orange one side i am putting yellow one side is orange one side is yellow i have combined both and now we will open no this is not opening it needs some time the moment you feel that it is not opening immediately please do not press it again i'm telling you all please do not press it because you will end up breaking the bath bomb instead of you know helping it release faster now this opened up this is the yellow side and this is the orange side so this is how it looks if you see 
yellow and orange. So this is how you can make a two color bath bomb. Different two colors. I'll just place this. Now, what we can do is, um, I will show you all how you can mix both the colors. Here we have one color on top, one color down. Now, if you want to mix and match, then how do you do it? So, we'll add some more white to this. I'm finding the powder a little dry, but uh, if I feel the need, I will just spray a little rubbing alcohol. How you need to check is, if your product is dry, just make this tight ball again and release it. If it is still there, if it is still intact, you are still good to go. You don't need to add anything. If you feel that's not happening and the powder is falling, then you need to know that you have to spray your uh, witch hazel powder or rubbing alcohol. So I'm just making this color a little darker. I don't want it same like that. Let us get some variations in our bath bombs. So this I have made a little darker orange than the previous one. And we will use more of yellow. So using of mica colors, when you are using mica colors, use of uh, polysorbate 18 is a must. Otherwise you will see all the oil and the color is all on your tub and it's going to be very difficult to uh, wash that out you all will have to use soap again and wash your entire tub and emulsify you won't have any problem it will all get washed off well okay so here i have a little more darker color a little darker orange and darker yellow so now if I want to make like you know, a, a totally mixed color, so what do I need to do? First I'll add little orange here in between, then I'll put little yellow, then again I'll put little orange, then I'll put little yellow, little orange, little yellow. So this is how I have filled it with different colors. Now here I'm, I'll put main yellow first, then I'll put little orange, little yellow orange, little yellow. Okay. You have to make sure one thing is very important. To make a perfect bath bomb, you have to fill it like this. If you do not fill it like this, if you just fill it till this flat surface, you will never be able to make your bath bomb. They will all break. Okay. It has to fill to the brim. And because the reason for this is there shouldn't be any space. There shouldn't be any space even for air in between your bath bomb so that it doesn't break. The moment there is any space in between, your bath bomb will break. Okay. how the color is different shade how it looks. So this is because we have mixed and matched everything. So this is how the bath bomb looks. It's different than the one that we made with only top orange and down yellow. So I'll just place this also. Okay, so now the next type what we can make, anything specific that you all would like to see.
any other color i think we'll just go with some other we'll just go with one color now if you just want any one color or we'll change our colors so we'll make two different other colors We'll go with pink and blue now. I'm putting two different colors. So before I add my color, let me just check. Okay, it is still fine. I don't need to add any uh, rubbing alcohol or witch hazel liquid to this. So this is my pink. I have made a nice pink color here, and here I will make a blue one. After this, I will tell you all about how we can make a. Uh, Forming bath bombs. What you need to add, or how you need to subtract it from your recipe. Uh, I will be telling you all that and uh, the natural way of forming your uh, bath bombs. If at all you do not want to use a uh, surfactant or anything, um, I will just be sharing that and how to make your bath bombs more fizzy, more uh, you know like spinning and fizzy bath bombs. How they are made. I will share that also with you. Okay, so now we will go with the other color. Here I'm putting pink. And here I'm putting blue. Okay, so I have both here and now we will combine them together. For those who do not have, uh, uh, you know, these bath bomb uh, containers because they are a little expensive. If you are going to be selling, I do recommend to buy this. But for those who do not have this, and you are still want to make bath bombs, you can use like these plastic containers as well. Just fill this entire thing. You get smaller ones. This is very big. Uh, just for reference, I just wanted to show you. You get smaller plastic containers. Just fill it on top, press it, and after some time, or uh, turn it behind, tap it, and it will come up. In my previous class, which I had a free bath bomb workshop, I had used a plastic container only because I did not have this at that time. So it is also possible, if but not for selling. If you're using it for a personal use, that is also fine. Okay, but if you're selling, then you need it more professional, and then you need to invest in. These type of bath bomb containers. Okay, so this is the blue portion. And this is the pink portion. So this is how the blue and pink bath bomb looks. Half side blue, half side pink. These are the bath bombs, all the bath bombs that we have made as of now. If you all can see this one, then this one, this one here, 
then this one, this one here. So these are all the bath bombs that we have made so far. So I have placed them all in the plate to dry till the time they do not dry. You cannot, uh, at least for the next 4 to 6 hours, don't keep on touching it or keep on checking it. Let it completely dry. After that, you can touch it. Even the packaging. The packaging also will only happen after 4 to 6 hours after it has completely dried. After that, you will do the packaging. Okay, so now the last one which we have, which we can go ahead and make. We will just combine all the colors so that we are not wasting anything. We'll just combine all the colors together and make one. Okay, this could get a little messy, but then it's worth the mess. So here I have both my containers. Press this. So this will be more of a multicolored bath bomb. multicolored bath bomb. So you can do something like this also a rainbow color. Okay, so I'm not touching them for my tray. These are all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bath bombs that we have made today. They are very pretty, very pastel and I'm just keeping them to dry out. Alright, so now this is how we made our bath bombs. Even the last one, the rainbow color looked very pretty with all the four different pastel colors. Uh, so this is how uh, you have to make your normal, uh, these are not normal actually, these are a little more advanced bath bombs. So this is how you need to make it. Now uh, for making a little more, uh, as I uh, wanted to tell you all, uh, how you need to make foaming bath bombs and uh, how you uh, need to make bath bombs which are more fizzy. Yeah. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Take it from Okay, so uh, now if at all you want to make bath bombs uh, which are uh, uh, you know, foaming. Foaming means you want to use it like a, uh, uh, you know, like as if you're having a bath with it. It is giving you enough lather and you can clean your body with it. Okay? So, for that, what you need to do is you need to add for 200 grams batch that you're making, you need to add about 5 grams. That is 5 grams of SCI powder. SCI powder is a surfactant which you will get it available. I can share the vendor details with you all. So SCI powder is something that you will need to use uh, if at all in, in the same way, in the same powder form. You will need to exclude Epsom salt. The Epsom salt I have given you all, uh, um, you know, 7 grams of Epsom salt. So you need to put 2 grams of Epsom salt. And the remaining 5 grams you need to add SCI powder. So if you do that, uh, you will get a, a bath bomb which will give you foam as well. So what happens is the moment you drop the bath bomb in the tub, uh, it will start giving out all foam with the SCI. And with that, you can start having a, like you know, you can have your bath, like you can rub the
pectin all over your body, clean your body. So along with the relaxing benefit, you, can, you will also get a good foaming effect on your skin. After which you will have to wash your body with normal water because there will be all foam. The other way is if at all you want to go all natural. You want to make milk soaks. Like you know something like uh, uh, you know to soak in milk to get, get a nice like you know more softening skin more like a milk soak. Same 5 grams you can add either coconut milk you can add normal skimmed milk powder any type of milk powder 5 grams you can add instead of SCI powder. So you get a nice bath bomb with milk soap. Like that is basically for people who have a very very dry skin who want something more nourishing, more conditioning for their skin. So that is something which people like them need to use. So that gives you extra hydration, extra nourishment on your skin. So that is something you can add milk powder, same 5 grams in place of SCI powder. And you have to reduce it from the Epsom salt. The 7 grams Epsom salt that I have uh, asked you to add, you need to add only 2 grams if you are adding these other two ingredients. This is a way you can get, so with the milk you will get foam. If you add milk powder, you get natural foam in your tub. Okay, so you will get a very nourishing and a hydrating effect as well as natural foam. Now the other thing is if you want a spinning bath bomb. Spinning bath bomb is what which keeps on rolling in the tub. Okay, that's a spinning bath bomb. So if you want to make a spinning bath bomb, what you need to do is, the recipe is uh, whatever powder we have made right now, that is what is the bath bomb recipe. But you have to make another little bit portion of an embed. Now what does, how do you make that embed? It's very simple. You just add 5 grams baking soda and 5 grams citric acid. Both will be in the same proportion. 5 grams citric acid and 5 grams baking soda. Both will be in the same proportion and you have to uh, mix them together, make that powder and uh, you have to preserve that in a in an airtight container. A container, if you want to make it for one time and use, then no problem, just make it. How you have to use it is, you put your normal powder that we have made right now today when we made our bath bombs, just put your normal bath bomb powder. When you reach the center, add this embed powder in it, very little of the embed powder and again, do the same thing on the other side. Fill your normal powder which we made and then on the top put your embed powder and then close both the sides. So what will happen that embed powder will be right in the center from both the sides. And that embed powder will help your bath bomb to keep on rolling in the water. So that is how you make fizzing and foam. You know the fizzy bath bombs. Those are very fizzy and those are spinning as well. So you need to make this embed 5 grams baking soda, 5 grams uh, citric acid. This I'm just giving you the minimum quantity. If you want to make a large batch, 10 grams citric acid, 10 grams baking soda. Both the ratios will be the same. The only problem is preserving them. Preserving them is important. It has to be, if you're making the embed powder in bulk and storing it, it has to be stored in a airtight container. If it is not stored in an airtight container, automatically with the moisture in the air, all the fizz of the citric acid, they both will react with each other and it will not fizz your bath bomb anymore. It will be totally flat. So that is a very important thing for it to remain fresh. You have to keep it in an airtight container. That's how you can make your fizzing bath bombs. Alright, I'll just take a few questions that are there before we finish our session. And I hope you all all have got the recipe and everything. You all have seen how we've made these beautiful bath bombs. Uh, for the preservation part, you need to keep it out to dry for the next 4 hours. You don't need to touch it even. You need to just keep it in a plate or just put a tissue paper and place it on it. And after 4 to 6 hours, once you, uh, once you lift it and it is tight and it is stiff, that is when you can pack it, you can, for packaging you need 
uh, uh, sling film, a normal sling film, just roll it in the sling film and whatever labeling you can do it. Alright, that's how you need to package it. Even if during, and this is a special uh, thing during the monsoons. In any other seasons, bath bombs, even if they are left out, nothing is going to happen. Even if they are not packed. But specifically in monsoons, they tend to, uh, they tend to expand. Why? Because of the excess humidity and moisture in the air, the citric acid and the baking soda start reacting with the moisture in the air and they start expanding. So I do not suggest you to keep them out in the open for a long time. Otherwise, they'll start expanding. They'll look very weird in, in the look. The look will be very weird. So after four to six hours, once they set, uh, uh, wrap it in your sling film and keep it. Even if you're not selling it, just wrap it in the sling film where no air, there's no contact of air with your uh, bath bombs. The first four hours, it has to be kept out for all the excess and moisture to evaporate. So you have to give it that drying period. After four hours, go ahead and wrap it with your sling film. Uh, add some herbs in the air. You can add herbs in between the bombs. No problem. You can add rose petals also. But everything has to be dried. Please do not add fresh rose petals. Don't add anything fresh. You will spoil the bath bomb. Price of container. You can check it on Amazon. I got all these containers. At about a set of 12 for 650 or something like that. Uh, yeah, Quantity of clay is 1 teaspoon. 1 big teaspoon for every 200 grams. Pack bath bombs, I just taught you all, I just told you all, you need to use a sling film and pack your bath bomb. Alright, okay. So I guess uh, most, most of all the uh, questions that were asked, I have covered everything. And uh, that's about it everyone. This was what we had for our workshop today. Uh, most of you all are in our group, so please do make them, share them in the group, let everyone see how you'll have managed to make the bath bombs, how they have turned out, use them and let us know how you find, you know, the feel of it after using these bath bombs. Thank you so much everyone for your time. Thanks for being there and being a part of the workshop. Thank you all. Bye.